a first for mankind. Chang'e 6 is on a business trip to the back of the moon and foreign media are hotly discussing. It will open a new chapter for human lunar exploration. In 1959, the Soviet Union's Lunar 3 probe captured the first image of the far side of the moon. This was the first time that humans unveiled the mystery of the far side of the moon. In the decades since, spacecraft from many countries have attempted to land on the back of the moon, but only China has done so. At 1727 on May 3rd, China's Long March 5th rocket carrying the Chang'e 6 lunar probe weighing more than 8 tons was successfully launched from the Wenchang Space Launch Site in China. The core mission of Chang'e 6 is to collect about 2 kilograms of samples from the far side of the moon and bring them back to Earth for analysis. The U.S. Washington Post website reported that if the Chang'e 6 mission is successful, it will be the first time in the world to sample the back of the moon. Scientists have high hopes for the Chang'e 6 mission, the British Nature magazine website pointed out in a report on the 6th. If successful, the samples collected will be a treasure trove and are expected to change people's understanding of the Earth, the Moon, and the history of the early solar system. Understanding the mission also carried scientific payloads from countries such as France, Sweden, Italy, and Pakistan, reflecting China's efforts to promote international cooperation in space exploration. In this video, let us learn more about it. Nature reported that China successfully launched the historic Chang'e 6. This 53-day lunar expedition will be the most complex and challenging lunar mission China has ever carried out. The British Guardian pointed out that Chang'e 6 will try to collect samples from the lunar South Pole Aitken Basin. The basin is the largest and oldest impact crater on the moon, located on the far side of the moon. China is the first country to bravely try. Bradley Jolliffe, a planetary scientist at the University of Washington, explained to Nature that the far side of the moon always faces away from us because of the Earth's tidally locked nature. Landing a probe on the back of the moon is much more complicated than landing on the front. Scientists can send signals directly to spacecraft landing on the far side of the moon, but landing on the far side requires communications satellites to transmit relay signals around the moon. In March this year, China successfully sent the Keqiao-2 relay satellite into lunar orbit, aiming to ensure communications between Chang'e 6 on the far side of the moon and ground stations on Earth. The Keqiao-2 satellite is equipped with a radio antenna with a diameter of 4.2 meters. Nature reported that this is the largest antenna of its kind used in deep space exploration. James Head, professor emeritus at Brown University in the United States, said the samples could provide new insights into the origins and early history of the moon and solar system. The British New Scientist believes that these samples are crucial to understanding the history of the moon, the Earth, and the entire solar system. They help people study the many asteroid fragments that hit the Earth and the Moon about 3.9 billion years ago and explain why the rocks on the far side of the Moon are different from those on the front. CNN pointed out in a report on the 3rd that the Chang'e 6 lunar exploration mission is China's most complex robotic lunar exploration mission to date and an important step forward for China's space program. The Chang'e 6 mission is also a key test of China's space capabilities. In recent years, China has made great progress in lunar exploration. In 2004, China officially launched a lunar exploration project and named it the Chang'e Project, after the mythical moon goddess. In 2007, Chang'e 1 was successfully launched. In 2013, China's first unmanned lunar probe, 
Chang'e 3, successfully landed on the moon, making China the third country in the world to achieve a soft landing on the moon. In 2022, the China Space Station will be fully completed, and the National Space Laboratory will travel across the sky. The technically complex Chang'e 6 mission builds on the Chang'e 4 and Chang'e 5 missions. In 2019, Chang'e 4 enabled China to achieve unmanned lunar landing on the far side of the moon for the first time. In 2020, Chang'e 5 retrieved samples from the far side of the moon. The Guardian pointed out that if the Chang'e 6 mission succeeds, it will greatly enhance China's confidence in achieving a manned moon landing before 2030. Next, China will continue to advance its lunar exploration plan, including exploring whether water resources exist at the south pole of the moon and plans to establish a preliminary base on the moon. Head also pointed out that the Chang'e 6 mission covers almost every step required for Chinese astronauts to land on the moon in the future. The U.S. Space News Network mentioned in a report on the 4th that the Chang'e 6 mission also carried scientific payloads from France, Sweden, Italy and other countries, as well as a CubeSat cooperating between China and Brazil. France has provided the leakage radon detection instrument to detect radon released from the lunar crust, which is used to study the diffusion of volatile elements such as radon in the lunar soil and beyond the lunar surface. With support from ESA, Sweden provided the lunar surface negative ion payload. Italy's passive laser specular reflector also went to the moon with Chang'e 6. The 7kg iCube Q CubeSat is a collaboration between the Pakistan National Space Agency and Shanghai Jiao. Tong University in China. China plans to build a permanent base on the moon. The project is called the International Lunar Research Station Program, and a number of countries and organizations have signed agreements to participate. With the launch of Chang'e 6, China has directly opened a bus between the Earth and the moon, which is 380,000 kilometers apart, completing the air relay between the moon and the soil. The realization of the Chinese nation's thousand-year dream of flying to the moon is just around the corner. With the help of the Long March 5th launch vehicle, Chang'e 6 was successfully launched, starting the world's first sample return trip to the far side of the moon. Over the years, the samples brought back from the moon around the world have come from the near side of the moon. After Chang'e 4 took off, various data returned showed that there are many scientific phenomena on the far side of the moon that are completely different from those on the front side of the moon. Scientific researchers need to obtain samples for further research. The Chang'e 6 landing area and sampling area are in the South Pole Aitken Basin on the far side of the moon. As the largest and oldest basin on the moon, the Antarctic Aitken Basin is as long as the Kunlun Mountains and deeper than the Mariana Trench. Chang'e 4 is located in the von Karman impact crater in the basin. Researchers learned more about the conditions on the far side of the moon from the data returned, laying the foundation for the launch of Chang'e 6. Public information shows that Chang'e 6 is expected to land on the edge of the Apollo crater in the Antarctic Aitken Basin, which is centrally symmetrical to the landing site of Chang'e 5 on the far side of the moon. When Chang'e 6 brings samples from the far side of the moon back to Earth, Scientific researchers will be able to conduct comparative studies with samples from Chang'e 5 to further uncover the secrets of the moon. China took the lead in sending Chang'e 6 to the far side of the moon, creating a new impossibility. If it wants to collect samples from the far side of the moon and bring the lunar soil home smoothly, how could Chang'e 6 not have some unique skills? Let's talk about the simplest thing first. Chang'e 6 is both a clairvoyant and an early ear. 
It can set up invisible telephone lines with ground stations and relay satellites to upload and deliver information. Secondly, Chang'e 6 is also an interstellar photographer. Important moments during the mission such as rendezvous and docking, lunar sample transfer, etc. can be monitored and photographed throughout the entire process, even under sunlight. In addition, Chang'e 6 has sufficient power and is full of energy. From launch to return to Earth, Chang'e 6 will have to travel for more than 50 days. In order to ensure the successful completion of the mission, scientific researchers naturally have to prepare sufficient energy for it. It is reported that Chang'e SIXS orbiter, lander, and ascender are all equipped with solar cell wings, which can be flexibly adjusted according to changes in the sun's angle. There is also a supporting lithium-ion battery pack, and the power supply at each stage will be adjusted according to the situation at that time to ensure that Chang'e 6 is always full of energy. During this mission, Chang'e 6 will go through 11 flight stages, acquire samples at different levels and depths on the back of the moon, and carry out scientific exploration simultaneously. Chang'e 6 successfully completed its mission without the help of the Keqiao 2 relay star, which truly built a bridge for communication between the Earth and the moon. In recent years, the progress of China's aerospace technology has attracted world attention. Previously, the China Man Space Engineering Office announced that it plans to achieve the first Chinese landing on the moon by 2030. China is moving closer to its goal step by step, and no one will ever question China's strength. China's journey has always been a journey of stars and sea. No matter how many difficulties, obstacles, blockades and restrictions lie ahead, China will never stop exploring space. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.